How would you like to try a low ABV drink from the Soda Fountain from 1901 that contains some of the finest French wines like Chateau Yquem and Chateau Margaux, Chateau La Tour, Chateau La Rose, as well as some fresh made fruit syrups called Italian lemonades that don't actually have any lemon in them. And it's dubious as to why they're called Italian lemonades when they use French wines. It's a little bit of a conundrum. So let's figure it out and uh, I will show you how to make one. I'm Darcy O'Neill, this is Art of Drink. These Italian sodas show up in George Dubell's Soda Fountain Beverages book. Uh, he has four editions of it. This one's from 1901, though it goes all the way to 1917. They are Italian, uh, they are Italian lemonades, not Italian sodas. Italian lemonade can be found as early as Jerry Thomas's book in 1862 but that one actually uses lemon and looks like lemonade with the addition of sherry. These can be slightly similar. They do use some uh, fortified wines like Malaga and well, Marsala is gonna be the replacement today, but they do use port and some sherries, I believe, in some of the recipes. There's about you know a dozen to 16 recipes, and they're basically named after Italian cities. Uh, they use fresh, made fruit syrups. I've done the cherry and the strawberry one. Those are the previous two videos I've done. So if you wanna know how to make them, check them out. It will make a big difference in the quality of your drink to use, you can use fresh fruit or frozen fruit, but they're better than the artificial flavors by a mile. Uh, the wines they use, again, Chateau Margaux shows up, Chateau Latour. There's this idea that for some reason, I think he's just kind of promoting these as the best and selecting some of the wines that are the best at that time period. Now, Chateau Margaux in 1900 had one of its best vintages ever. I think you can probably still get a bottle for about twenty-five to $30,000. I wouldn't recommend mixing it with this, but you could if you want. Uh, that might be something I would do and just because. But uh, you can use any red wines that are similar to you know, the region. You don't even have to use similar wines. Basically, once you mix it together, the wines will be fine. They're, they're, what they do is they add some acidity, a little bit of alcohol, which kind of dries out the syrupy sweetness of these, and it works well with this. They have a kind of almost a sangria type thing going on, but not quite. These are different. As to why they're called Italian lemonades, I haven't been able to figure that out. They only show up in George Dubell's books. Uh, any Italian lemonades are repeated, in other books, are repeated from the Jerry Thomas 1862 version. Again, lemon, lemon juice, sugar, sherry, water. These ones, I will show you how to make right now because they are interesting and just a side note if you have a bar or a restaurant and you have house wine that you pop open bottles and you have leftover bottles this is a great way to use it up and put a low to no alcohol or a low alcohol drink on your menu it still has a bit of wine and has that fruity flavor it's a good summer drink so consider it but let me show you how to make it right now so you can either make this by pouring all the ingredients into a single serving glass because the proportions are pretty easy. It's four parts wine or fortified wine to six parts syrup. So, you know, two to three, but often it's four parts of strawberry, two parts of cherry, you know, two parts of Marsala, one part of Bordeaux and one part of Margot. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to make a 500 ml bottle of syrup uh, because it's easier and for me, it works. So first we're gonna need 200 mils of strawberry syrup. Now we're gonna need 100 mils of cherry syrup or black cherry syrup to be specific. But again, you can use any syrup you want. It's, this one is just for a Venetian Italian lemonade that was in the recipe book. So, but uh, I'll put a link down below to how you find all these recipes, these Italian lemonades, and then you can go through them, uh, kind of see what they are. And then you can take this basic formula and do whatever you want with it. So a lot of them require like pineapple syrup, currant syrup, you know, apricot syrup. They have lots of interesting things 
for it. So now we're going to need, so now we're gonna need 100 mils of basically any red wine. This is kind of a Canadian red wine, which has kind of Bordeaux-esque flavor profile to it. And then we'll need 100 mils of Marsala. Now we're just gonna give this a quick shake. And there you have your basically wine syrup. And that's gonna be the core of making the drinks. So after that, it gets even easier. Now to make the drink is pretty straightforward. Once you have your syrup, you're just gonna need an eight ounce soda water glass. That was the standard glass at the soda fountain. And you're just gonna need 50 mils of your syrup. Though we're gonna do this serving solid. One thing I've noted when trying this, it does need a touch more acidity. So I, I'm gonna add a couple dashes of acid phosphate. Uh, you can add lemon juice, you can use citric acid, whatever you got around, malic acid. A little acidity is gonna give this drink a little bit more bite. It's a little flat, uh, just using strawberry and cherry syrup. So uh, to serve solid, you basically fill your glass with soda water first. leaving just enough room at the top for 50 mils of syrup. Now one thing you'll find is when you serve it this way, you know, there's always a concern that it's going to foam over. It usually doesn't, sometimes it does. If you're using something with fruit juice in it where you haven't filtered it, those little particles will cause the carbon dioxide to come out. And that's one of the reasons we don't do these with ice. Uh, at the soda fountain, some did use ice, but the, the people who really believed in soda felt that ice would make the drink flat. Sure, it makes it colder, but if you chill your syrups and you chill your glass and you chill your soda water as close to zero degrees Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit as you can get it, these drinks will stay cold for 10 to 15 minutes without ice. Again, in really hot places, time may vary, but they do stay cold for a surprising amount of time, as long as everything is chilled. So once it's like this, you know, uh, it's a good looking drink. It's got that crimson color. And yeah, it's got hints of wine. You can definitely taste the strawberry. That's the syrup we use the most of. Um, it definitely comes through, but it is not, sweet it's not cloyingly sweet it's definitely got some balance in there it has a unique flavor especially from these fortified wines an aged note and again you can use any wines you want you can use ice wine in these you can use sauterne which is actually called for in a number of the recipes it, it, it's up to you you could probably use vermouth in it if you wanted but uh, any of this combination of four parts wine and six parts syrup combination is going to work for you. And again, you don't have to use just strawberry and cherry syrup, you use pineapple syrup, they have apricot syrup, gooseberry syrup, currant syrup, any, any fruit syrup you can actually make, you can use in this. Or the variations of this drink can be quite large. And if you wanna know the alcohol level, it's 1.2% when using 50 mils of the syrup. And that's assuming your fortified wine's about 18% and your regular wine's around 12. Uh, in Europe, this would be considered a non-alcoholic drink because it's 1.2% or below. And in North America, it's a low alcohol drink because to meet the no alcohol level, it has to be 0.5%. Anyway, there's a very small amount of uh, alcohol in here. Again, it's only an eight ounce glass. Again, you can increase the proportions if you want. You can add ice if you think it you know, fills out the drink, but it is better served this way. The carbonation lasts much longer, especially if you're using highly carbonated soda water, this is a better way to do it. And serving solid just has that, it's self mixing. You don't actually ever have to put a spoon in there to decarbonize everything while you try to mix it. So uh, if you're looking for this option uh, to have a low ABV drink on your menu, give it a shot. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.